The International Studies Association, or ISA, holds its convention each year. Um, this year it's in Montreal, and it's focusing on global governance and political authority and transition. So from a thematic perspective, this is an important topic to CG. ISA kind of serves as two purposes. One, as a trade show for international studies, where publishers and think tanks and other nonprofits display their activities for the year, and they try and recruit new authors. Um, it also serves as a purpose for senior scholars and younger academics to explore their work, um, present their findings, and develop a bigger network. I came to ISA uh, because it's uh, where the world is coming. It's interested in international studies. And CG is the uh, world's leading think tank on global governance. Uh, so uh, it seemed appropriate that we come and uh, tell our story here. Well, basically to meet with colleagues and uh, uh, professionals who are in the field of international studies. Much of the panels are focusing on issues of global governance, international economy, international security, and some of the cutting edge research, particularly on the theoretical side, but also a lot of the more sophisticated empirical studies are on presentation here. So it's a real opportunity to get a crash course in uh, some of the new and novel ways of studying the world. Well, we're doing a number of things. Firstly, we're showing all our reports and books uh, on, the, uh, on the various topics in international governance. But we're also uh, highlighting a couple of uh, recent, uh, very new publications by CG Fellows. Uh, one is the book that uh, distinguished fellow Paul Heinbecker has written on uh, Canadian foreign policy, which is called Getting Back in the Game. It's a book I wrote because uh, I uh, was uh, optimistic about Canada's prospects, uh, be because I was dissatisfied with the way Canada's foreign policy was going, and because I, I was uh, confident that we could do better. Another distinguished fellow, Andy Cooper, who is releasing uh, his book on internet gambling offshore at the ISA conference, and uh, he will be here signing copies as well. I was doing a variety of panels, and I guess the connecting theme is the changing hierarchy. Uh, there was a panel of CG, DFAID, looking at, at the role of, of middle powers. Obviously, Canada has an established tradition, but there's a new sort of wave of middle powers, Korea, Turkey, and again, uh, this was, was of, of great note and, and a good audience. Uh, the other reason was sort of the smaller countries. Uh, I released a book uh, on, on internet gambling offshore, looking at a, a fascinating case of Antigua taking on the US in the WTO. Uh, and even though that was the main activity on small powers, I was also on a panel with about Al Jazeera that got, again, even at 8.15 in the morning on the first day, got a, a good audience showing the, the sort of public diplomacy, the, the branding of a small country. CG goes to ISA every year because this is a primary audience for the work that we do. There are 5,000 participants and those include many political science and international relations uh, courses in uh, universities around North America and beyond and graduate students. Uh, they're a good audience for what we do because they are policy influencers. They engage in networks that include policy makers and they're also teaching uh, the next generation of policy makers or will be the next generation of policy makers. So it's a good place for us to put our work out. As well, many of our fellows and chairs participate in the panels that are going on. This is an incredible week of activity. There are 1,000 panel discussions going on at three separate hotels in Montreal. An incredible amount of intellectual activity and, and it's also a place for us to get ideas. So we set up a booth in the exhibit hall, we distribute our publications and we go to all of these events, or as many as we can, and uh, fully engage the community of thinkers on global governance issues.